Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Canada's agent training session. Um, also joining me, my name is Leanne Bettyall. I am Supervisor of Agent Relations. Also joining me are Sonia Takar. She's our Regional Manager, um, who is located in India, as well as Madan Ding. She's also a Regional uh, Representative um, in China. Um, so today we have uh, a few things um, that we're going to go through, but uh, first, just so you know, just a few little things to note that for those of uh, your colleagues that may not be able to attend today, um, this is rec being recorded and we will have this, um, rec uh, this recording up on our website and shared with the agent network within the next week. Now, also, if you have any questions, um, we encourage you to put it in the Q&A or the chat at the bottom here. Um, you'll, I, I do recommend that you just pause until we get through some of the presentation slides because some of those questions may be answered throughout. Okay, so let's begin. Oops, bear with me here. <clears throat> All right. Okay, some of the items that we're going through today, um, we'll be speaking about uh, our campuses here uh, in North Bay and Perry Sound. And we'll also go over program highlights, the student residence, English language policy, diversification and geographical incentives, the student direct stream or SDS, um, very important, the terms and conditions of the agreement that we have with agencies. Um, that's your responsibilities as an agent, as well as Canada's responsibilities to you as a partner. Sorry, pardon me. I am just going to decide it safe. Okay. Um, the student and agent resources that are available to you and students, processes and best practices. Tips for successful applications, reasons for study permit refusals, as well as international student orientation. Okay, so um, so as you can see here, um, Canada has uh, quite a few campuses. Right here in North Bay, we have three campuses. Our main campus right here is uh, offers state-of-the-art programs such as the International Nursing License Preparation Program, um, nursing, mental health and addiction services worker, enterprise analysis and research. Uh, we also have um, post-production, game and design, uh, ECE, which is early childhood education, environmental technician, and so on. So as you can see, we have a diverse selection of programs here at our main campus as well as um, at our Commerce Core campus right here, um, we offer the trades and technology programs as, such as civil and mechanical engineering, community and justice services, police foundation. Uh, we've got a lot of the trades like machinists, electrical plumbing, um, construction project management, and so on. And so we'll, we'll speak about some of these highlights, these program highlights as we go down this presentation. Also, we have our aviation program. So our programs here, um, I, I'm basically, I'll go back a little bit. This, this campus is only one of a few um, colleges that offer the aviation programs in Ontario. Now, our this campus is located right beside um, our North Bay, the city of North Bay's airport, and it was built in 2002. And the, the labs there are, are quite phenomenal. There's about 40,000 square foot of premium um, aviation lab training space. Um, and this facility produces high trained technicians in the fields of aircraft maintenance. So these are people that have been in the industry that are teaching our, our students. 
And down below here is our West Perry Sound Campus located on the shores of Georgian Bay. And they're located approximately two and a half hours uh, from Toronto. Um, and they offer the healthcare administration program every fall. So just to mention too, I meant to mention that North Bay's uh, location is about three and a half hours north from the city of Toronto. We also have a private partner um, with Stanford International College, so a Canada at Stanford. And we have campuses located in Brampton, Mississauga, and Scarborough. And a number of uh, programs that are being offered there, we offer as well in uh, the city of North Bay and the community of Perry South. Okay, so we're gonna go over a few programs here. Uh, we'd like to highlight, um, we'll say series of about 10 or 12 programs. Um, and if you ever need additional information, we can certainly help out there. We have um, a lot of information on our website, so we can certainly guide you there. But I'm going to go over through uh, some of them right now. Starting with the Aviation Technician Avionics Maintenance Program, it is a two-year Ontario College Diploma Program. And um, students will be trained, as I mentioned a bit earlier, under skilled professionals to repair and maintain aircraft, electrical, and electronic systems. This program is actually approved by Transport Canada. Now, Canada is expecting, um, they're predicting a big shortfall of skilled aircraft maintenance personnel across the country, and I think I'm safe to say across the world over the next two decades. So this is definitely a program that uh, that needs, we need um, professionals in this, in the industry. So um, it's something that maybe some of the students might be interested in. Uh, the Behavioral Science Technician and Technology Program is a two or three year um, Ontario College Diploma or Advanced Diploma Program. And in this program, students will, um, will be taught real world experience through multiple work placements in clinical settings. So for instance, they'll be on the community in working with, uh, with real life situations with children with autism who are on the spectrum or other developmental disabilities such as acquired brain injury. So those who graduate from this program will work in the diverse uh, situations within the community, uh, such as clinical, school, residential, or hospital settings, just to name a few. Okay, so the broadcasting, television, and video production, um, the students will learn um, hands-on in this program. So some of you um, may be aware that we do have a local Ontario Hockey League here in North Bay, in the city of North Bay. And so they'll have those opportunities to be at these live events, um, to learn hands-on. Now they'll be using uh, video production equipment starting in the first semester, so right as they begin their studies. And they will learn every aspect of the trade from behind the camera. They will gain practical industry experience covering live events and working on corporate videos and mobile productions using uh, mobile production trucks, for instance. This is also um, an, 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 a great opportunity because graduates of this program are eligible to compete to, com to complete or apply for the digital cinematography in two years rather than three. So some of the future careers in this, um, film and, te and television, of course, live production, video, documentaries, online productions, media outlets, as well as freelance. The civil and mechanical engineering programs are located at our Commerce Support Campus. And I'll begin with civil engineering program. So this in-demand career has unlimited employment options in both the public and private sectors. Many of the things that we use today are impacted by civil, uh, civil engineering, um, including dams and power stations, water sewage treatment centers, or sorry, plants, uh, roadways, structures, both large and small, and, and so on. This program will provide the students with tools um, to, of the trades to be successful in this profession. 
So some future career options may include uh, structural municipal engineering, construction design, highway and transportation engineering, water resources, geotechnician, uh, environmental, and much more. Uh, the mechanical engineering program, uh, the students will learn to design and develop and maintain machine components. Um, so such as like the tools, heating, ventilation systems, power generation, uh, manufacturing plants and equipment, and much more. So some of the future careers in the mechanical engineering program may include consulting engineering firms, manufacturing and processing companies, and government agencies. Okay. The culinary management and culinary skills chef training are um, two programs. Um, again, this hands-on experience. So students will begin right from their first semester to the hands-on. So there are exciting careers that could take graduates across the globe in these programs. So they can work in, in let's say, cruise ships or own their own business. Um, students will be trained by highly qualified professionals and chefs that have been in the industry and they will gain the skills and management technique necessary in the field. Um, so this is similar to culinary management, the culinary skills chef training, um, there, there's opportunities as well. So that those who are in that program, they will also be eligible for direct entry into the second year of the culinary management program. So they go hand in hand in a way. Um, so some of the, um, the employment opportunities there include executive chef, private chef, catering, food and beverage manager, chef de cuisine, sous chef, it goes on and on. There's so many different um, employment opportunities for graduates of this program. Okay, so the Community and Justice Services Program is a two-year Ontario college diploma program offering 200 hours of field placement opportunities. So this program will prepare students for rewarding and challenging career working with youth and adults in crisis. Um, students will gain working knowledge of law, criminology, and human behavior, and they will benefit from practical workshops. So there'll be hands-on workshops uh, that will, they will be able to practice, and they'll also have industry tours um, and an integrated field placement. So as part of this program, they will be out in the community um, as part of this program requirement is uh, placement. Some workshops may include conflict resolution, mental health, first aid, hostage taking and negotiating, and so on. So plenty of, there are plenty of career opportunities as well in the Community and Justice Services Program for graduates, including youth worker, a restorative justice worker, policing, correctional officer, emergency response team officer, uh, court liaison, um, and program development facilitator. <clears throat> the Enterprise Analysis and Research Program is one of the fastest growing fields within, uh, basically, in, in the uh, in the industry. So data analytics are is used in many different sectors, both including marketing, law enforcement, and community and social services. Now students of, of this program will learn and gain the skills required to interpret data and predictive models to successfully give direction to both private and government organization. This training provides a foundation for dynamic career in a number of disciplines, including cybersecurity or AI, um, and the possibilities are endless. The Entrepreneurship Management Program is a one-year graduate certificate program that will provide students with the tools to learn to be their own boss and turn ideas into thriving businesses. They will learn to develop and explore entrepreneurship opportunities in a variety of industries and develop comprehensive business plans, strategies to execute effective marketing plans, and use market research 
to optimize the operation of a small business. And students will gain the versatile skills to be successful in a business or entrepreneurial setting. Okay, so the International Nursing License a preparation program is a one-year Ontario College Graduate Certificate Program. And this program is intended for internationally educated nurses who already have an international Bachelor of Science or nursing, a Bachelor of Nursing degree, who are seeking the opportunity to further prepare uh, to apply for the Colleges of Nurses of Ontario for regulatory licensing. So basically, um, these students will will be um, practicing what, or the, they'll be taught what to expect on uh, the um, the for licensing for to practice being a nurse in Ontario. So the the laws of Ontario for nurses may be may may differ from let's say students from their home country or from even other provinces. So this course will prepare them to be invited to do that that uh, exam. The Mechanical Technician Machinist Program, um, they, this program will teach students to produce custom parts for any type of vehicle or machinery and with good paying jobs uh, upon graduating. And so um, just as an example, I did have an opportunity to speak to one of the professors there. And that professor was seeking out, you know, students, where are the students? You know, the, the, there are some industries out there that are, are ready and willing to hire those who are successful in the program. Um, so the, the good paying jobs as well. So this is definitely a program that we're looking for additional students because the market's looking for these experts. So um, as you can see in this picture here, this lab is 8,000 square feet and students will receive training on manual machines as well as automated uh, computer numerical control uh, machining equipment. And they will gain the skills to produce custom parts for virtually any type of vehicle machinery. The Mental Health and Addiction Program, um, students will prepare um, for meaning, meaningful career in this in demand field. Students will train to work in mental health and addiction specific settings. And in, that includes the spectrum, um, broad spectrum of social and health agencies. So they will learn in class and in the field through simulations and group work. So there's a lot of group work in a lot of our programs and under the skilled instructions um, of our professors. So again, most a lot of our professors have been in the work field. So they will have great examples. They'll have, great, they're amazing. Our professors are amazing. They will be able to teach these students um, what it's like to be in the industry. The college collaborates with agencies all over the province of Ontario and with local institutions for experimental and placement opportunities for the students. Some um, employment opportunities may include mental health and addiction facilities, hospitals, correction, recovery and rehab homes, uh, as well as addiction treatment centers and prevention programs. Uh, the Police Foundation Program is a two-year program that offers exciting careers in the field of law enforcement uh, in the community. So students will learn from experienced professors inside and outside the classroom. Throughout the training, students will work on a number of projects with policing agencies, and they may have the opportunity to be paired up with serving police office mentors. So Canada does have close partnerships with municipal, regional, and provincial police services, providing vital experience and networking opportunities. So some um, future career options may include border services, corrections, Canadian military, public and private law enforcement agencies, 
the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and provincial municipal police agencies. The pre-health sciences pathway to certificates and diploma programs. Um, so students in this program will learn hands-on from uh, some of our amazing professors, and they will obtain the knowledge needed to make informed program choices. So, so basically it's a pathway into potentially uh, to branch off into uh, different programs, including practical nursing, biotechnology technologists, occupational therapist assistant, physiotherapist assistant, environment, environmental technician, and so on. So this is this is great for students who not who are not quite sure yet what they would like to do, but this is definitely a one year certificate program that will give them that guidance and more assurance into what program diploma program they might be interested in. Okay, so this basically, in a nutshell, gives you an idea of the diversity of our programs um, at all of our campuses. And so for more information, we'd be happy to help you um, at any time. Um, so of course, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. So we're going to now talk about our on-campus housing residents. Now, our student residence is an extension of the classroom, and students will have the opportunity to really experience a living on campus with other domestic and international students of Canada. Now, as you can see, these are great, great buildings, and this is also a great way for students to make lifelong friends and experience the Canadian culture. Now, residence does offer clean and secure accommodations for for uh, individual international students, where students will gain the independence and experience, they can experience life at Canada. Now, please know that for, there is a process for residents. So it's very, it's encouraged that you guide students um, to book their rooms or to put um, an application in for, res for residents as early as possible, as soon as they know that they will be coming to Canada. The rooms do book up fast, so um, yeah, so there, there could be a wait list, but please make sure that students do this early. Now, if any of your students are looking for accommodations in North Bay or Perry Sound, please reach out because, you know, we do have other options other than residents, so we do have staff on board that can assist with, let's say, um, uh, in the community, housing in the community. Okay, so this slide, this slide basically speaks to the English language policy that Canada has in place. Um, so as you can see here at a glance, this is actually located on our website and perhaps Sonia or Madan, you can uh, share that link. That would be great with the group. Uh, so it just shows you um, what our um, requirements are for English language policy. Canador also offers um, the geographical incentives to different regions of the world. So I'm not going to go into the specific details, but as you can see here, I'll use, uh, let's say, Africa, for instance. Um, all students that are registered with Canador, they will automatically, as long as they are registered, they will automatically receive an incentive of $2,500 um, and that'll be split between two, the first two semesters, so up to two semesters, and that will be deducted from the students, um, sorry, that will be a credit towards the student's um, account. So they do have to pay, of course, uh, the full amount in, in full, the full, um, <laughs> sorry, they have to pay the fee, the college fee in full. And then uh, once they're registered, that's when we would apply it. So as you can see here, we have incentives for Central Western Asia, Caribbean, uh, Central and South America, and so on. And this is also located on our website. So perhaps Sonia uh, um, or Madan, you can um, share that link as well. Oh, I just wanted to know too. So these are mostly for the North Bay and Paris Sound campuses. 
Uh, not all of these are applicable for uh, Canada or Stanford campuses located in the city of Toronto. Okay, so the SDS program or the student direct stream. Uh, so this program is designed to make applying for Canadian study permits faster and more efficient for some international students from these countries. So you'll see here, there are 14 countries approximately that are listed here. Now applications eligible for SCS are aimed to be processed within 20 days, but that's again, um, that is something I would recommend agents to refer to the IRCC website to be sure um, that that has not changed. So again, anything to do with government uh, changes, um, I would redirect you to the IRCC website. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the terms and conditions of our collective agreement with you as our agent partner. Now, um, we do recognize that there are some, just before I go on to this one, we, we do have some agencies that we have expired agreements with. We are working through that and it is a priority for us. So please be patient with us as we are getting through that process. So part of the agency agreement is uh, the agent's responsibility is listed here and it's also listed on the agreement that you should have on file is to promote Canada's programs and conduct services with integrity and accuracy to recruit student international students who meet the academic and admissions requirements in an honest ethical and professional manner in accordance with the higher step industry standards accurately and honestly inform prospective students of terms and conditions of admissions to Canada's programs, the, and then review authenticity of all original documents. There's a there's a list here. Um, I'll, I'll keep going through it, uh, but it's so important that you 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 really get familiar with the terms because this is what makes us a strong partner with you. Um, and so I'll continue on with the other points here. Ensure that applicants are eligible to enter Canada on a study permit and temporary resident visa and are likely to receive these documents in time to study at Canada or in the semester applied for. Typically, we encourage um, we encourage students and agents to guide students um, that three months prior to intake, they should have um, all the necessary paperwork. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of you that have questions about the announcement last week. Um, I did send, um, Candidor did send an email out yesterday. Um, so that's the latest. So please refer to that email for further information with a direct link to the IRCC website. Um, agents are also responsible for furnishing uh, all the labor materials, equipment, supplies, and other services that are necessary to provide the services to students. And you're also uh, responsible, responsible for being aware of and adhere to IRCC policies when providing services. So again, I can't express it enough. Um, you know, IRCC policies, it's very important that you follow those policies to be able to guide students. And of course, follow our own Canada's own policies. Agents are also expected to use the highest levels of academic advising, recruiting practicing practices, and immigration advising when working in partnership with Canada College. And you also agree to follow Canada's agent onboarding process as communicated, as communicated by the international department subsequent to the signing of the agreement. Hence, this is why we are here today providing um, the training. And there will be multiple training sessions throughout the year. And uh, as I mentioned, they're recorded, so they're, they're always available in the event that you might miss one. Now, Canada has a responsibility to you as our agent partner. Um, so Canada, we have to exercise due diligence when working with you to recruit international students, endeavoring to ensure that agents have the appropriate knowledge to advise students regarding their academic options. So Canada has, um, for the agent network, we do have an agent relations section page, um, part of our, our website. Um, so that's being worked on now. We're continuously um, enhancing that. So there's a lot of uh, resources there already for the agent network. 
So please don't hesitate to, to refer to that, or if you need more information, we're happy to share that with you. We are also responsible to provide at no cost to the agent the materials to promote Canador and its programs. Once again, all um, it's all on our website. We are also responsible to assist agents by providing additional information related to a particular student inquiry. So if a student walks into, say, the international department and there's an issue with an agent, we are responsible. We are responsible to that student as well. So we want to make sure that student has been properly advised and has the best support from our agent network as an extension of Canada. We will also investigate complaints received from students in regard to agent conduct, and we will take appropriate appropriate action, such as potentially ceasing our agreement. So just keep those in mind. I mean, we're we're all here to assist each other. So um, basically, if in doubt, reach out. We are also uh, responsible to pay commission for each recruited student registered with Canador as a full-time student. Now, the key is they have to remain registered within the first 10 days. So basically, a 10 class beyond the 10-day count and for relevant semesters for up to two semesters. Okay, student and agent resources. So you will see here a quick snippet of, of everything that we offer on our page, our international uh, micro um, website. So we'll, we have the international student guide, which has recently been updated. We also have information about GuardMe. That's the health insurance policy that students will have while they're studying with us. And we do get a lot of queries about that. So, so which is fine, and they're welcome to come in. We have resources here to guide the students. And so if they happen to ask you, the agent, um, you can just redirect them to us. Um, or you can just tell them GuardMe is the provider that, for North Bay and Perry Sound only, uh, GuardMe is a provider for those students. We also have the, the Canada International app. that's called the ISET app that we expect students to download because that is our channel for communicating with students directly once they are on campus. So it's, if we have events going on, um, such as cultural events, um, you know, that's where we're going to communicate or if there's a change, let's say in programs, um, it could be anything, that's going to be the channel. And then as you can see here, there's a lot more information that's offered by the province of Ontario, pathways to immigration, um, we also have um, some employment um, employment uh, resources here as well. So that's just a quick uh, a quick look at what we have to offer for students and agents. Now we also please don't forget we do have three hundred sixty degree virtual tours of our campuses and labs. So there are lots of great features on our website. Um, so get familiar with it. Um, this is a great way to, to feature Canada or to potential students. So while you're out recruiting, um, may, perhaps you might want to share some of these virtual labs. So um, so basically, um, the, the international department is here and for you. So we do have our international microsite with and within it, we have all the tools. And as I said, we continue to enhance and you will find various resources to support your recruiting efforts. So this page here, we're gonna go over a number of processes. Um, so this, there's gonna be a lot of information here, um, but don't hesitate to contact any, any one of us um, if you, you need supplementary information. So we're gonna start with the processing timeline. Now, the current timeline to process letters of offers is approximately six to eight weeks. Um, now, that changes often, so continue to just be patient as we're going through hundreds and hundreds of applications. Um, so, so, we'll go on to the application process number two. Now, OCAS is the platform to upload all applications and they do have resources and guides readily available to guide the agents on how to navigate the OCAS platform. 
Now, if you need additional information, uh, we do have resources that can assist you. Um, and I will, I will mention that in a little bit. Now, agents are responsible to fulfill the complete application process on behalf of students. Now, you are retained by that student to accept. So these are some of the steps that you'll have to do on behalf of that student. And you'll have to accept the offer, upload proof of, proof of payment, upload study permit, and adding all the required um, information that is needed. Um, there, are, there are steps that, uh, that are pretty clear and, and quite streamlined. Um, there's also the um, there's also another big piece that's missed uh, quite often is adding the required study permit numbers and update residency and citizenship to reflect the study permit and where applicable requesting refunds and OCAS. So all of these steps um, is all done not by email but through the platform. Now, when new documents, this is very important, this is something that Canada has noticed throughout the applications that we've received, is when new documents, let's say that you, that you didn't have all the documents for that student, but then you have additional information that you have to upload. Please be sure that when you're uploading any new documents to select resubmit, there's, a, the, there's that button that has to be selected after each uploaded document. So again, very important. Now, agents that refuse this service for students stating it will have an impact on commission payments or it would affect their contract renewal may result in termination of agreements with Canador. This is false. Um, this is not a good way to, to, to guide the student. That is between corporate, so this is between Canador's international department and the agent. The student does not need to know about commission payment. It doesn't work that way. So please, please cease that practice, okay? Um, so we're gonna go on to the third one, which is the admission requirements. So the admission requirements are listed on our website for each of our programs. So, and when you do go into um, our website, you can search by program, by requirements, by fees, and so on. And so um, get familiar with, with our programs. And we're gonna go on to uh, tuition payment receipt and proof of payment. Now students should not register until they have received their study permit and visa and or if they plan to defer. So that should be the very, very last step. So we've seen uh, on quite a few applications that students are pre-registering before the semester starts or before they have all their documents. So you can help Canada's uh, team by advising that they should not register until all documents. Basically, when all documents are there and they, they, don't, they know they're coming, then they can register. Now, basically, if they do submit or if they do um, register prior to these documents, uh, doing so without a study permit may be at risk of the student. So they may lose fees. We don't want that. And so if students do register and they are unable to attend class, they will have to withdraw their application by completing a specific online withdrawal form. And so again, you know, there's a lot of things that they'll have to do if, if they pre-register in advance. So if you can, um, you of course, as agents, you can help communicate this information to students and discourage this practice. Now, the re the uh, request for refund, um, so that's um, that is also initiated by the agent. So when a student is saying that they, they can't come for for a number of reasons, then it's up to you, the agent, to uh, request. Request a refund through OCAS. Again, OCAS is always going to be that platform and that's a portal that you will have to go through. So only a, ref a refund is only um, available if the offer is in a paid state in the system. So let's say this is done once proof of payment or receipt is uh, of the deposit or full tuition has been made. So the, uh, I'm gonna talk about the minimum deposit. So the minimum deposit is $2,400 Canadian dollars. So that proof of payment has to be shown before a student 
can request a refund. Students that are filling study permit applications and require receive will be redirected to their agent. And so agents are responsible for uploading that proof of payment. So there's a two step here. The student has to make that request. Once the student has received it, they submit it to the agent. The agent uploads on behalf of the student. Again, this is all done through OCAS. And then once that's done, then Canadora will issue a receipt. Now, if the proof of payment is not uploaded to OCAS, this will result in offers being revoked. So that's another timing. It's all about timelines. So please refer to the timeline on the letters of offers. Um, they are listed there quite clearly when the first payment is due, when the second payment is due. Um, so please refer to that letter of offer um, very carefully. <laughs> um, yeah, so Canada does have a lot of videos on OCAS processes that can be shared if, if you are a new user, for instance. So if you need any assistance, please reach out. We have little quick uh, one to two minute videos that could be of, of great use to you. We're gonna go on to number six, student emails. Now, please, when you are um, entering the application, please, the applications for students, please ensure that students, it's a student's email that's included in the contact information and not the agent's email um, or the counselor, for instance. The reason why is all communication from the international application system comes into the student information system and it is critical that Canada communicates with students directly as they prepare to commence their studies. So basically it just rolls into when they when they register and that's the email we will use, Canada will use to keep students informed. Now deferrals, number seven. Now Canada's academic delivery plans, sorry, um, wrong one. So a deferral often occurs when the student's visa is rejected. So in this situation, agents will have to withdraw the acceptance letter uh, of the student uh, in OPS. And so we're allowed up to one, to, uh, students are allowed up to one deferral only. Otherwise they have to submit a new application, which also entails a $100 application fee. So the academic, Canada's academic delivery plans, that's number eight, so our delivery plans uh, for future intakes are posted on Canada's website. Now we've been receiving inquiries uh, specifically from students about changing the delivery of our programs. That uh, what's on our website is, is final. And so say if it's a hybrid model, that's the program, or if it's fully online, that could be a possibility. Or say if it's in person and students say, well, can we practice, can we do half? Um, online. No, the basically the delivery plan is on the website and that is what's being delivered. And so there's no changing that once a decision is made, um, it is uploaded and, and that's what's being offered to students. Okay, so I'm going to move over to late arrivals. Number nine. So students um, are um, Students, the international students quite often do arrive late. Um, so unfortunately we've had to, to decline or we had to turn them away from, let's say if they arrived like three weeks after school or after classes have started or the intake, um, it's too late. Um, so each year we have some students that do arrive and unfortunately Canada will have to let the students know that they, they may not be permitted to access further classes. So Canada requires that international students arrive on time for their studies. Now we recommend uh, no more than two weeks before classes start. And so within a two week period is, is a reasonable time. It gets them familiar with the community and as well with Canada's community. And so um, if they arrive two weeks prior, that's ideal. That would be the ideal situation but not any earlier if possible for a number of reasons. But please tell the students, we've heard, we've heard from students too that they've been guided 
by agents that they can just arrive and then that we would accommodate. That does not happen at Canada. And so again, we depend on, on, on the agents to guide the students properly and advise them that they should be arriving no earlier or at, at, at within a two week period before school starts. So we're gonna go on to campus change now. So campus changes, we do get a lot of those requests as well. They are not permitted. The campus location is actually listed on the letter of offer, and that's where the student is expected to be. So should the student wish to commence uh, to change the campus, they will have you will have to close that current application and reapply for consideration. So there's no guarantee that you know, if you do reapply on behalf of that student for that same program at a different campus, there's no guarantee that that program will be available for that intake. Um, and so, so there's, um, we do want to make sure that agents are aware that the campus location is listed on that letter of offer. And when you're putting in the application on behalf of the student, make sure it's the right campus that the student is looking to attend. Okay, on to um, number 12. So these are um, just items that we've noted that has occurred in OCAS. So students without a last name, that does happen often. So where students do not have a legal last name on their passport, um, what we, we recommend is you put a period in that field because in OCAS, that is a mandatory field. And so make sure that you put that, that period on the application. So on to number 13, payment deadlines and extension requests. So payment extension requests will not be granted. We've, again, received quite a few uh, queries from students who have made these requests. Now, if students are unable to make, meet payment deadlines, Canada will close the applications, uh, the application and students will have to reapply uh, for future intake. So again, no guarantee it'll be the same program may not be available, but that's the process that we have. Now, agents should not receive fees directly from students either. So all fees should be through, as I mentioned before, the payment. So once a payment receipt is received by the student, the student sends a receipt to the agent to upload. Agents should not be receiving a fee from the students. Okay, so agents, uh, sorry, students are also required to pay the fees via Flywire. That is our platform that we use for fees. We understand that some countries, we may have more difficulties, but we're, we're, we are working through that. And so if you have any concerns about that, just reach out. Um, but yes, so once the Flywire um, has, or sorry, once a student has paid through Flywire, they will receive that receipt that agents will be then required to upload to OCAS. Now, please be clear with the student about this practice because sometimes they want to pay directly to us or you know, they'll, they'll want to pay with a credit card. We do not accept to, in that way anymore. Now, the key deadlines, dates and deadlines are very important to reference in order to achieve the best outcome for the student. So these are all steps and these are also um, listed on our website, but uh, we do want agents to really get familiar with the, the, um, the dates and, de and the um, deadlines. And that includes exams, you know, there, there's a, a variety of things that are there. And so, uh, yeah, so this is something that we, we definitely want you to get familiar with so that you can best assist, assist a student. Number 14, so Canada, that's the intake. So Canada has three intakes currently. We have one in September, that's our biggest one in the fall. We have one uh, winter, which is in January. And we have a spring summer intake, which begins in May. Now we do make every effort to open intakes well in advance. And so we do get a lot of emails from agents asking us, uh, when will the intake be open? Uh, just note that we will be sending a communication out to our agent network 
in advance or basically in advance of the intake opening to advise when we will be open. So if you could reduce maybe those, those emails, that would be appreciated. Know that you will get an email from Canador when the intake opens. Okay, and then um, number 15. So CI Can, so the College and Institutes Canada does offer a course for education agents. Um, so we do um, encourage agents to keep up to standards. In fact, we are working, uh, the province of Ontario is working for the um, the best, the, um, sorry, the standards of practice. And so the implementation date is June. So we're working really hard on that right now at Canada to make sure that the standards of practice are in place. And we're gonna work with the agent network to make sure that you have the proper training. And so please keep an eye out on that. Okay, so we're gonna move on now. I know there's a lot of information right now, um, but this again, this will be posted on our website. So you, you'll be able to reference it back. Okay, so um, we have uh, just a few of, um, tips here for successful applications. So applications to Canada College are submitted completely via OCAS. And I've mentioned this a number of times just to make sure that because we have received some emails in the past where some agents will send everything through email. So that is not accepted. So it's through OCAS. And so some of the following information and documents are required. So in order to be eligible um, for uh, as a student, um, a study plan. So a study plan in order is, is really good to have as an accompaniment, as well as the content of the plan and financial support. So I'll go on a little bit further with this information. So basically obtaining the letter of acceptance from Canada, and that's part of the application, of course. Prove that you the students have sufficient financial support to cover their first year of tuition, as well as the living expenses and return transportation to his or home country. Now this amount has recently changed, and now uh, this amount, um, rather than ten thousand dollars, is now twenty thousand dollars. It's a GIC, so that's 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 new information again that we received from IRCC. Now, IRCC may request an applicant to supply a police clearance certificate. It is important that applicants have a clean record. So applicants with a criminal record or a criminal background may pose a risk to Canadian security and they may be refused. So that's just a, a good to know as well. A proof that students are in good health. So IRCC may request an applicant to complete a medical examination. So if they have that in advance, um, it's good to have as part of the, the, the um, application or all the documents that they bring when they come to Canada. So basically students have to satisfy uh, that to immigration officers that they will leave Canada at the end of the stay authorized by the study permit. Now students should apply for a study permit as soon as they receive their letter of acceptance from Canada College as student permit processing times may vary from depending on which, which country they are from. And this is just a bit of information on reasons why our IRCC may refuse study permits. Um, so a study permit is a temporary visa, which means that it has a valid, validity period and expiration date. So is if in a study permit application, students are required to convince a visa officer that they will leave the country. So these are just some of the, uh, there's a lot of information again here on uh, why a student may be refused. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but it shows you here that um, the student, they have to prove again, that the students, the students have the ability to financially support themselves. They have to prove that. They have to prove, um, also that whether the students, basically the, the, the slide before explains what they need. If they don't, they don't have those, they may be refused basically. Because IRCC may question the student's letter of acceptance because there's some fraudulent activity as well, unfortunately, um, in, in the um, industry. Oops, okay. 
sorry. So we do have, um, I put a question mark, I'm gonna go back because we're not sure yet. So we do have a mandatory international student orientation that is uh, offered at every intake. There is question marks there because we do not have the date yet, but that is definitely a full day event. And this is where the students, when they, once they are here, they will get all the information they need to be successful as students at Canada College. So um, keep an eye out on that date. We will share that date once it's done. Okay, so on to um, the four rules of um, engagements for ages. So this is really, I think this is such a, an important slide because if you follow these four things, this will make that partnership, not only with Canada, but with, with most importantly with the student, a, a seamless and, and a great experience for them as they come to Canada, especially North Bay and Perry Sound. So if you remember these four rules of engagement, you will optimize your relationship with the student. Engagement, engage with the student. The more you engage, the more the student will engage with you. Make it easy and effective for those students. Make sure that the information is very accessible and should be seamless. The environment, so your office space, make it an, a welcoming environment that will provide students with the opportunity to ask questions, whether that be in person or virtually. And empowerment, so if you empower that student and the students will be encouraged when they are provided with the right tools. They get the right tools, they will be empowered, and they'll be excited to come to Canada and to become independent individuals and learners. This concludes basically, I know it's been a long hour of lots of information, but this basically concludes the formal uh, presentation. I've put this slide up uh, for further information and support. So you will see here for agent relations um, emails, this is the proper email. Um, if somebody can maybe put that in the chat, Sonia or Madan, that would be great. It's agent.relations at canadorcollege.ca. That is your key to questions. And then if I don't have, or if Canada doesn't have the answer, if the international department doesn't have the answer, we will redirect you as appropriate to the right person. We also have the microsite here. This is your resource to agent tools and resources. So you have a lot of resources there. You've got pictures, you can have um, the videos, we have virtual tours. Uh, we also have um, our branding information. That's very important too. Make sure you use the correct branding and that is uh, located on our microsite. Uh, we've noticed um, on a few occasions that some agents will use an old um, logo. So again, if in doubt, reach out. Uh, we can certainly help you, guide you where it is, but the branding information is all there for you to use. And I'd like to thank everybody here. We have a great number. We have over 150 um, who are present today, and that is wonderful. And I'm going to just exit here, and I'm going to leave it open to some Q&As, and um, maybe I'll redirect it to Sonia and Madan to see if there are any questions that you've seen that are worth mentioning um, part of the Q&A. Madan, <clears throat> do you have anything to add? So please make sure that um, the English proficiency requirement is high for the applications that you submit. Um, there is question about the training material. It will be definitely posted on our website. And for uh, those who are inquiring about May intake and change of intake from fall to May, uh, we request you to kindly email um, those cases because it totally depends on program and seat availability. Uh, we understand that the fall 2024 students would want to shift uh, either to the main campus or they would want to shift to the spring intake. We request for an email because it completely depends on program and seat availability so that we can check. There has been a lot of questions about backlogs and gap years. Uh, we do not specifically mention about gap years because it totally depends on the overall profile of the student, academics and English proficiency. However, we um, 
and backlogs uh, we do not prefer too many backlogs but yes up to 15 is acceptable and the usual questions about attestation letters and uh, the new IRCC guidelines, uh, we have also posted uh, the link for that that is available on our website regarding those announcements. Uh, the exact details can be answered when, when we have more information about that and whatever information we have right now, we have provided the link for that. Thank you so much, Sonia, for that. Um, uh, any supplementary information, Madan, that you'd like to add? <clears throat> okay, great. Okay, so thank you again. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us uh, today. And we'd like to wish you all a great rest of your day, evening. And uh, please keep an eye out for communication from Canada. There will be uh, quite a bit coming out in the next little while. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Thank you.